quiet, but I'm fine. <laughs> Today, again, while I was still in church, um, the cat decided she wanted to be fed, and she came in and sat on the back of my rocking chair and threw a little paw going against me, against my backside in the rocking chair, like, feed me, feed me, and meowing yeah. and yelling. But of nobody course. hears me, so it wasn't a problem. Okay, so I, I went ahead and started thinking that maybe the message would go out long about one, we would have it. And when I see that I've got a viewer or two, I think I'm going to start recording this one. And so I will do a bit of an intro. Okay. I think we usually do. And we'll see what we've got. It's Sunday. We may not get very many. And this is kind of earlier. It's kind of early in the day, too. So it may be catching. Although I did put a notice in the community that said we were doing it. And that we were doing it at 1 o'clock. So we'll just kind of see what trickles in here. Okay. Or maybe it won't. If it doesn't, I'll start at 1 anyway. And we'll just go with it. Yeah, yeah this is us changing our time up. So who knows? Well, it kind of fits with some other things I'm doing. The 1 o'clock Eastern time is when I'm I'm doing most of the other Twitch things that I'm adding into my weekday schedule. So, you know, that part of it's pretty good. There. Okay. I'm going to pop on Twitch here. Very good. Okay. Good All afternoon, right. kiddos, and welcome in. Bonus mom here, and I've got nerdy teacher with me. We are talking Dungeons and Dragons today, fifth edition, and I am very excited with one of my favorite, actually, uh, character uh, classes to play, which is Cleric. So we are going to talk about Clerics today. Stallarini, hello, back at you. Good to see you today, and welcome to the folks that are that are joining us. We changed our time a little bit, and we're together uh, 1 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, Eastern Daylight Time here, in my case, Eastern Tennessee. Uh, nerdy Teacher is a little bit further south and east of me, I think. And how are you doing today, Nerdy Teacher? I'm hanging in there. It's oh, September already. My gosh, it's already been a month since school started. And and we have not, oh. yeah, we haven't been here, oh my gosh, since when? So this is kind of a long, a, a long time coming. Hey there, kiddo, Pickle. Now, Pickle, I didn't hear that. That's interesting. That makes me think, because of what I was doing, that it is possible that Pixel has, um, has those things turned off. I didn't either. It's all good. Yeah, I, I suspect that the sounds and things are turned off because I was doing a conversation with no remark that we do on Tuesday. No, I know what it was. It was when I was doing a crochet. I was doing a crochet online demonstration thing and he turned those off. So. So they don't work. Can you put a notice in there for me, Pickle, and say, don't do whatever that is. Are they the channel things or the bits? Because the sounds aren't working, if you type that in there so anybody else in chat would see it, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Ad land. Oh, okay, Black Moon. Ads. And we're just finding out that my sounds and things, the hey kiddo and things don't work. But good afternoon, Black Moon. Good to have you here today. Now, I've, I've done all this talk and I'm getting ready to hush because, yeah, sounds are off. Thank you, Pickle. Pickle, yeah. Turn this over to... Um, Nerdy teacher who is getting ready to teach me more about clerics. Well, you say it's your favorite. I'm curious. Do you often pick cleric? Is it your favorite or <laughs> do you choose it? Do you tend to choose it a lot because somebody needs a healer? <laughs> no, that isn't it. It isn't either one of those things. I'm going to pick another one. Um, I did uh, started a campaign, and we didn't get to finish it a long time ago with Vincent Page, who is another creator here on Twitch and TikTok that I really like. And I created a cleric, my very first one ever, and I named her Bunkum Duncan. And Buncombe is a county here in Tennessee that if you're going on Route 42, North Carolina, over the 
Smokies, you travel through Buncombe County, and I just love that Buncombe. It's just a great word. So I created this tall <laughs> female fur bog named Buncombe Duncan, and I loved her going into North Carolina. Excuse me. Yeah, that was bonus dad cheering me on. Okay. <laughs> so that's it. So that's really, it's more about that I loved this character but I did like what the cleric did. Um, also, Caduceus Clay, this the Critical Role Campaign 2 Taliesin character, I just fell in love with that character because so many Dungeons & Dragons characters, you know, it's like bigger, worser, bash the monster, bash the monster. And he was just this charming in touch with the nature and let me brew you a cup of tea. And I loved that. Very good. Yeah. Um, I feel like... It might be just in my little circle here, but whenever someone thinks about clerics at first, they think, okay, it's it's the healer, right? When mm. Someone who's brand new to D&D might look at the cleric and go, okay, that's the person that heals everyone. And I want to go in and, you know, bash things, like you said. Uh, so I don't want to pick the cleric. But good point. Yeah. It takes, yeah, it takes some time for some people to understand that, Clerics are very hard hitters. They can be a tank as well as somebody that can get you up when you're down. And like you said, Caduceus was a, a very calm character, but still could hit hard and do what he needs to do. There are so many different types of clerics out there that you could have any personality and still be a good cleric. Let's see, what do we got going on in chat? We got lots of people showing up. That is awesome. Yeah, we so love I'm that. Curious in chat, uh, how many of you have played clerics before? Yeah, let, let us know. know. And, oh. Uh, if you remember the subclass, let us know. Some clerics <laughs> tend to like fire spells. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yeah, Necrisis clerics tend to like fire spells. Hey, Silver Moon Fox, <laughs> welcome in. Yeah. Necrisis is playing in the. Uh, game with me so is silver moon fox actually uh out of the abyss and it's it that's a wizards of the coast adventure and mcreese is playing a cleric so she may have lots of wisdom and be able to make me make good choices today too yeah oh and doc and, robert he's our dm from out of the abyss so oh, hello fireball cleric is best cleric yes <laughs> and then you've got you know clerics like uh season two of critical role jester she was a, technically a cleric but I think she used a healing spell like maybe four times in the entire campaign. Yeah, uh, yeah. She just she just wanted to hit things. She didn't take any healing uh, spells. So <laughs> um, she even had a healer's kit and gave it away to another character because she wasn't going to use it. Um, but, but clerics can be absolutely what you want. They don't have to be the mom character, uh, even though we've got bonus mom here and I chose my con mom shirt just because i see that uh, i love it i love it yeah <laughs> uh it is the trope they're the moms of the group but they don't have to be um my husband i love him to death but he has a character that i uh do not enjoy when he brings around just because it has he has a very heavy scottish accent but he has a cleric who uh yeah my husband's walking into the room can you hear me talking about him <laughs> what's his name again Dallas, right. He has a cleric named Dallas, heavy Scottish accent, and let's say that we were in a tavern and there was some sort of, you know, like a, a little tavern fight happening. Somebody gets down to 4 HP. This is the cleric that would come over, pick him up, like, from the scruff, and put him on his feet, and then smack him on the back as hard as he can to give him the cure wounds. Oh, his, okay. His strength is so hard or his strength is so uh, high that he has to roll for damage because he's going in with a full-on smack on the back. Oh, my gosh. That's a dangerous cleric. Uh, Doc Robert is telling us he had a group of students do an all-cleric party. He said they called themselves the Amen. The Amen? <laughs> the Amen. Yeah, great, great, great. Amen. Start the day with a pun. Thank Very you. appropriate for a Sunday afternoon. Well, yeah, I do sure. like that about clerics. That was something that I that I learned from watching Caduceus is that he did have all that like nature and whatever and stuff, but he could, you know, he he made himself felt in the party and it was interesting to see how he the flavor that he was able to bring to it with being the grave cleric was just very interesting to me. 
so 5e starting off with a cleric i don't know like for example in my opinion most people in my circles go okay what's everyone else bringing melee 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 okay we need a healer so i <laughs> guess i'm a cleric but there are people you know like you who have favorite characters that were clerics and absolutely adore playing them um clerics definitely need high wisdom and high okay. charisma those are going to be your saving throws um your spells will be focused more around your wisdom score so that definitely needs to be your highest but okay so you want to select spells if you get now what now clerics clerics really get most of the spells right it's what they prepare from day to day or something oh, that, is that a cleric um, there's something about that in the player's handbook. Do 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 do. Nice spell slots. Regain. There was something funky about uh, the clerics. So when I first started playing D and D, I had an older version of the player's handbook uh, that I borrowed from a friend, and they had some sort of line in it that has been revamped in a newer edition since I bought this one. Um, when I think it was, the misunderstanding was you had access to all of the cleric spells. I think that's how they worded it prior. And that's not, not yeah. what you're, yeah, that's most people were like, oh, I can just have all of the cleric spells. That's technically not true. Um, I think it was my first DM who taught me that, and they had it incorrect. Yeah, it, uh, so I had to I had to unlearn that. It still depends on what uh, subclass and some different things that you pick. It'll send you in a different direction or another with the cleric. Yeah, but you do yeah. get a lot. You do get a lot of spells. You do get a lot of spells, and unlike a lot of spellcasters, you can change your spells after a long rest. Mm -hmm. Some spellcasters you can only change when you level up. So if you know that you're going into a dragon fight the next day you can change up your spells from the more uh what am i say discussion useful uh role play useful spells and bring in the heavy hitters and healing <laughs> um but yeah i think there used to be a line that confused a lot of people where they thought if you just took like one level in cleric you could have access to the entire cleric spell list so, <laughs> slot level one through nine and that's why a lot of people were taking one level of cleric and D, D had to come out and be like that's not what we meant sorry let's change that <laughs> okay and that was very broken <laughs> so when i toss my numbers to build my character if i'm thinking i want to be a cleric i am most interested in wisdom and charisma as to what i want to punch to get the best numbers that i can because that will determine the role. That'll help me on the roll of the dice, right? I'll get more numbers if I'm using the wisdom or the charisma charisma modifier, and they're higher, like a plus three or something. Then I get to add that to everything I roll if I'm doing like an attack roll or a saving roll or a skill yeah. check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, someone in chat uh, might know better than me. I know that wisdom is the spellcasting modifier for clerics, but uh, for the second saving throw proficiency, uh, it's charisma, which is why, you know, most of the time you want to be really good at those. I did have a cleric that had a negative in charisma. She was not a good talker. And it did not affect my spellcasting whatsoever. My theory is that charisma is the secondary because a, for role-playing, clerics should be good talkers and be able to calm people down if they're trying to heal them. But also, there's a lot of saves that a villain might use to target clerics that are charisma saves. Okay. Like people, I think it's charisma saves. Okay. So I wonder if the reason charisma is suggested as uh, the next stat is to protect you um, and for role-play reasons. Okay, Doc but, Robert. Like Doc Robert is here, and he's already said wisdom's the mod, not charisma. So now we'll see what he says about the secondary. Okay, so he can weigh in on that in a minute. Interesting, though. I've made a note of it. Charisma saves usually compel people to do things. 
that's fair. And you don't want your cleric to be charmed by somebody because <laughs> that would hurt. You don't want them to uh, fall prey to the vampire spell, for example. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like I had a cleric with a low charisma and I didn't have any issues. Okay, but quoting the book, he's saying under quick build, it says wisdom and then strength or constitution. Well, those are, I mean, it's always strength and constitution, isn't it? That's that's everything. Usually he makes dex or constitution second highest. Okay. Exactly. You do get proficiency and charisma saving throws, though. But absolutely, Silver Moon, thank you for pointing that out. So you can flavor your cleric however you want, but wisdom is going to be the most important, no matter what you do. Um, because you can also get access to medium armor, and then with a couple of feats later on, you could take heavy armor to protect yourself. Strength is definitely important, uh, but you could also just focus on dexterity to up your AC. <laughs> I'm making notes here while you're telling me. And you're the right thing, stop, the thing about uh armor for a cleric see that kind of surprised me because um I, somehow i think of a cleric as being excuse me the person in the long robe i guess i'm kind oh, of confusing fair. them with priests maybe a little bit you know and so i didn't mm -hmm. i was surprised to find out they get armor and i and i was also to surprised to find out how much damage they can do with their spells and things so clerics were more complicated i saw them as very like the peacemaker and the easygoing person standing around heal you heal you heal you so yeah to find out they got some punch was really amazing that's fair and you could be a cleric in light armor. You are proficient in it, so you could just have the robe, and you'd probably want um, to be very dexterous so that you could uh, up your AC without having to wear, you know, the medium or the heavy armor. The heavy, yeah, um, yeah. Which, again, you get medium armor at the start. If you want heavy armor, you take a feat later. But, Doc, uh, Doc is ahead. just mentioning that my backup carrier for Out of the Abyss, in case I get killed, does have okay. heavy armor, so... Yeah. All right. Mick Reese, I think we did talk about point by. Um, we did mention it, I think, at one of the first videos. We can definitely discuss it again uh, and see if Bonus Mom wants to do it this time. But I don't know. I always like to roll. I think it's wonderful. You like point by, you're saying, or you or you like to roll? Well, I like to roll. I like to roll. I like the chaos of rolling. Yeah, I kind of do too. But then on the other hand, you know, point by, it wouldn't hurt to, to do it. We did, didn't we do standard array? One of our characters, we went ahead and did standard array on. I'd yes, have to go uh, back right, and look. I'm I pretty sure. Your tiefling? I can't remember. It's been so I think long. it's your tiefling fighter. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been only yeah, a year now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. We'll figure it out when we get there. Well, maybe maybe we can do both and see uh, if we like one version better than the other. Let's figure it out. Okay, sounds good. So if I'm building but, a cleric, first thing, the majority kind of is wisdom and then either strength or constitution, but pay attention to charisma because that's very useful for saving throws. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. So spellcasting is going to be similar to... Uh, most of your other classes um the odd thing about cleric though is you really need to know who your cleric is when you create them because where most people will choose a domain or a college um a circle that is their subclass at level two or three you pick it at level one okay i kind of imagine it as since clerics get their powers from some sort of divine being, um, or in case of uh, someone like an Oathbreaker, if you got a homebrew, uh, or you're using that subclass, breaking away from a divine creature. Um, lost my train of thought, sorry. Got a notification in my brain split. <laughs> That's okay. Well, you make a very um, interesting point. I want to catch up yeah. with what you just said. I want to address that first, and, I, and we'll look at chat in a minute. I picked the uh, 
the same thing that Caduceus had. Was that the nature domain cleric or the grave cleric? Whatever it was that Caduceus Clay was, that's what I told Pixel when he was helping me build my character that I wanted to be. Like, I was definitely channeling that character. So I automatically knew that before I built my character. So that would have fit right into what you were talking about. Then I actually played another cleric uh, in a private it was it was we did it through the computer but it was not streamed anywhere and i played granny patsy i basically at that point in time played myself and she <laughs> was she was a nature domain cleric awesome and and i was using myself so i knew what i was going to be before it ever started so i natch i like without consciously planning it did exactly what you just said <laughs> yeah so because you get your powers from some sort of divine being, I think you have to kind of know who you want to follow or what personality you want so that you have that ready to go. Because at level one, your character gets these powers. That's the start of their adventure. They swear fealty to a deity or maybe they just have these powers and they don't know where they're coming from. They're trying to figure it out. Who knows? Uh Let's see, in the player's handbook, the main they have a lot actually. They have a lot of subclasses in the player's handbook. Uh, the knowledge domain, life, light, nature, tempest, trickery, or war. And of course they've added quite a few, and we've got McGreese and Doc Robert going uh grave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grave cleric, which was Caduceus, I believe. Um Thank you. They, they definitely add flavors and whatnot. Since uh, I think we just wanted to stick with the player's handbook to start, just since we're doing this for beginners. Um, if you know of a deity in uh, D&D that you like, uh, for example, um, you might be interested in Tor, who is more of a violent deity. He's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Uh, <laughs> I think he's like the god of the storms, maybe god of war. I can't quite remember. Uh, but he's definitely more violent. Um, so you, that might be better for a war cleric. You might go Tempest cleric because uh, if his domain is the storms, then Tempest kind of fits with that. Uh, if you want to have a good aligned cler uh, you know, deity and you want to be a lawful good or neutral good character, then maybe life or light domain would be better for you. Um, or you could be like, well, War cleric sounds really cool, so I'm going to do that. Uh, what kind of gods are war gods in D&D? This guy's name sounds cool. I'm going to follow him. <laughs> yeah, or sometimes it's just that you want to do something different. Or it could be flavored a little bit like the adventure that you know you're going into. You True. know, like in certain... Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying? Of, Go ahead. No, that was it. That was pretty much it. So a lot of different things can determine... Um, if you're teaching how to build a character, all the ways of getting stats should be covered. And we've kind of done that, I think, as we've gone along. McCreese is also reminding me that she has notes of everything we've done. And yes, we did do standard array. We did it for the rogue. Uh, oh, the rogue. Okay, I remember now. Okay. And then Doc Roberts says, I actually think save. Okay, there are too many short things in there for me to know what that. What you're saying. He's saying uh, the save proficiencies make charisma less important because adding your proficiency lets you offset on your save. Oh, gotcha. Purely mechanically. And when you get mechanically, you Doc goes over the top. He is amazing <laughs> at build building extremely powerful characters. I know I'm I'm playing one that he built for me right now. My uh bugbear barbarian Rupert. <clears throat> Okay, so Evangeline, that's from Out of the Abyss, chose Paylor. Well, I'm just, because I kind of know a little bit about clerics and what I've seen, I've never seen a Tempest cleric. Do they use the weather to do what they do? Uh, let's see. I think my husband right now is running a Tempest cleric. Let's take a look at their section. Um, so Tempest... Uh, just the word itself reminds me of like, you know, uh, a rainstorm with lightning and thunder. So taking a look at the domain spells, which again, at first level, you get access to these special spells of your domain. Uh, Tempest domain spells would include fog cloud, thunder wave, gust of wind, shatter, call lightning, 
sleet storm, control water, yeah, and more. So it's definitely water slash lightning based spells and themes. Okay, that'd be great for an adventure that start that happens at sea. Oh, and Doc Roberts yeah, says he loves to. Yeah. <laughs> now let's see what Shakespearean place would that be? The Tempest. Yeah. Guessed it in one cast. You're oh, so yeah, astute. Oh, I'm not awake yet, bonus mom. That's okay. You did great. Yeah, I was. I'm not used to you being sarcastic. It's that edge. I keep telling people I've got an edge. Bonus mom has an edge. <laughs> wow. You woke me up early on a Sunday. I'm not awake yet. I'm sorry. Well, bless your oh, heart. I'm kidding. I am bless... kidding. Oh, now I'm... you're kidding. So there we are. Okay. And okay. so Doc Robert has a Tempest campaign. Well, oh, so I got a sub. I tell you what, Pizza, thank you so very, very much. Oh, no, maybe Moobot, thanks for, okay. The thing is, let me just remind everybody, all of my goodies are turned off because I was doing something that we were recording and I couldn't have all the like, hey, kiddos, and the sound. So I'm so sorry that I'm, I'm not going to know that you did thing. And Silver Moon Fox now is very interested in Tempest campaign, and I am too. And and this is, I'm just going to interject in here because it's something that you all need to be thinking about before we get to the end of today. Um, Nerdy Teacher has graciously consented to do and run on stream on Bonus Mom 70 on a Friday night here soon, a one-shot and in this one shot, the characters that we use are going to be the characters that we have already built in the past. So we have the potential for someone to play a rogue, a barbarian, or a, what's the other one, not bard, what's the other thing we did? Fighter. Fighter, Fighter rogue, and barbarian, and possibly the cleric. Hey, hey Ham Pam, which good to see you today. Um and she's going to incorporate the characters that we've built into that campaign. I'm going to play the bard, and the spoiler on that is the bard's whole deal is crochet. Rather than playing the guitar, singing songs, the, the bard is a mighty crafter of all sorts of things to create things. And I'm going to play that character. The other characters, you could actually build, use the exact character that we build, or you could use the subclass and the... Um, you could use the class and pick your own, roll your own stats and pick your own uh, race, whatever you want to do. So, a crochet turd. Yes. Yeah. Something like that. So if you are interested in that, it is probably going to happen probably the 6th of October, a Friday night, but it could be as soon as the 22nd of November. We have to clear that with Pixel. That's why we're not there. It will happen on a Friday night. And it will probably be streamed through here, but hosted by uh, Ages of Ainor. So think about that. Do you want to be? Do you want to have? You want to be in a game with Bonus Mom and have Nerdy Teacher be your DM, and you can be. It's a Friday night, and you can be there. So get in touch with Bonus Mom and let me know. Okay, that's the end of that ad. Back to the bard. <laughs> well, as we're talking about Tempest clerics, uh, we were discussing armors earlier. Um, at first level, you would, uh, with, if you choose Tempest Domain, you would get proficiency with different types of weapons, but also heavy armor. Okay. Find hilarious because you're wearing more metal and turning yourself into a lightning rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, you get proficiency. But, yeah, well, the temper, Tempest Cleric does sound kind of fun and interesting and different to me. Okay, well, we'll consider that. As we go into the next thing that you get, let's see. So you pick your divine domain at level one. We'll say for now, we're thinking Tempest. Uh, and then for channel divinity, you get that at second level. Now all clerics get two channel divinities. One is the standard and one is something that you get with your domain. The standard one is turn undead. undead. Very useful if you're playing Curse of Strahd or anything like that. Um, let's see. As your action, you present your holy symbol and speak a prayer censoring. Censoring? That's a word. Okay, the undead. <laughs> uh, they have to make a wisdom saving throw, and every undead within 30 feet of you, if they fail, they will turn and run away. As your turn undead levels up, it 
uh, becomes destroy undead, and instead of running away from you, they just drop. If they reach a certain creature level, of course, they, uh, if they're too strong, then it doesn't affect them. You know, you can't just kill a vampire with God, uh, destroy it dead. Unfortunately. <laughs> Playing a light cleric in Strahd was so powerful. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I bet. yeah, I can see that too. Absolutely. <laughs> Crochard. Okay, we're trying to get this name of what it is that I am, Crochard. I think that would probably be the choice. And in, instead of crochet tard, I think I'd go with crochard. I like that. Back to the to that bard, but leaving that bard be behind. You got to be careful with how you uh, end that because it almost sounds like crochet turd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see light cleric and Strahd, Strahd being amazing. Yes, and the turn yeah. undead. I mean, I I know about turn undead now as a cleric, and I absolutely loved it. It was phenomenal. Um, Definitely handy if your uh, DM likes to throw skeletons or vampire spawns at you, you know, low-level undead stuff. But what's <laughs> that second one you can get? Well, it depends on your domain. And for the Tempest domain, it's called Wrath of the Storm. And basically, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Wrath of the Storm is just something else that you get at level one. We'll come back to that. Uh, your second channel divinity is destructive wrath and Des basically when you roll any spell that does thunder or lightning damage you can use your channel divinity and roll max damage wow <laughs> So if you get access to Call Lightning through the Tempest Clip domain and you have ninth level spells, uh, you can just choose. I'm just going to roll max damage. Just do the math and figure it out. <laughs> our it is insanely strong. Our channel divinities remind me, once uh, you get two per long rest and or short rest or... Double checking that now. Let's see. Because that really matters. <laughs> That's a little bit hard to catch up with if you're struggling like I am sometimes to remember the mechanics. Is what you get on a short or long rest and what you only get on a long rest. Hey there. Hey, little nugget. I am so sorry that that hey there, kiddo, didn't work. Um, Pixel has them turned off. Let me see if I can turn them back on. Well, while she does that, I'll answer her question. Please I do. And I wanted to double check. You get one channel divinity uh, per short or long rest. So you can get it back after a short rest. See, that's really, really powerful because some of those things, that just that just gives you so much more opportunity to use it. You know, if you just stop and take an hour, if you, if, you know, if you're huddled somewhere and you're just resting up to go to, if you get those back, it can be all, uh, awesome. No, I am not saying that I can turn those sounds so i do not have uh let me say chat sounds are turned off yeah. okay i am so sorry about that folks now you do get at sixth level you get two channel divinities between rests and then at 18th level uh you would get three and mm -hmm. again it's short or long rest but you you know sit down to eat dinner somewhere and then you can get your max damage back immediately yeah and, you know, that's another good point about short rest. Uh, sometimes I think we get so caught up in the moment as D&D &D players that we forget about short rest, you know, and we just, we got it, we're getting low and we got to go, we got to go. And of course, we're afraid the monsters are going to come around the corner at any second and get us. We know we can't risk eight hours at a long rest. They'll all be so far away from us. We'll never catch them again or whatever. But that short rest can be really powerful. Oh, and Doc Roberts says, I've seen a lot of stuff about how the game is designed for people to take more short rests than we do, and that's interesting. It is. I mean, we get these channel points. I don't know about you, uh, nerdy teacher, but when I get low health, it's like the last thing I ever think of is, oh, can I use, can I take a short rest and use my hit points? I tend to think about, do I have any potions of healing? Does anybody have any cure <laughs> wounds? And it depends on where you are, because if you're in... Um the Dungeons of the Mad Mage, you know, you are very much not in a safe place to stop and do a short rest. If you can find a cave while you're, you know, walking along in the middle of a storm or something, 
uh, out in Curse of Strahd, you might be able to do a short rest there. Yeah. But you can't just clear a room of vampires and then sit on top of their dead bodies as benches and chill. <laughs> you know, no. sometimes you got to get up and go. <laughs> yeah, Slaying Look- the Paladin is surprisingly powerful when you add your divinity to attack. Oh, yeah. Okay. So double, uh, like a multi-class there. Also, they talked about how making a short rest only takes 15 minutes could help that. 15? Ooh. That's scary. I don't know. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think uh, we're, we're veering wildly, but it's so interesting. <laughs> there are so many times that we as players, we get surprised. You DMs surprise us, you know, and we think we're going one way. Of course, sometimes we surprise you, and suddenly something appears. It's the trip through the woods, and you're focused on what you're going to do when you get to town, and now you have that 2 a.m. adventure or whatever. But anyway, times when... 15 minutes would be very helpful because we all need to plan what are we going to do next. And, you know, in real life, we would do that. Real life, we'd stop and reconnoiter and, and kind of think about what we're going to do next. So I, I kind of am interested in the 15-minute thing. I think that sort of makes sense and gives players a chance. Roll those hit dies, take that drink, eat that bite, right? That's how you would role play it. You stop, you refresh yourself, you wipe the blood off of you, and then you're ready to go again. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great way to role play it. <laughs> Let's see. So, channel divinities you regain after short rests uh, or long rests. We've got a discussion about short rests going on in the chat. Um, now, the odd thing about clerics is normally when uh, you have a, a class, you get something at um, like third level, fifth level, sixth level, something like that they tend to put all that into the domains. And the only other thing besides ability score improvements you would get at fourth and eighth level that you would get from just being a cleric is divine intervention, which is insanely rare to succeed. (laughs) But when it does, when it does, it is amazing. Beginning at 10th level, You call on your deity to intervene on your behalf, whatever that means to you, whatever you ask of them. Now you have to roll a D100 and you have to roll, it's either, let's see, a number equal to or lower than your cleric level. So you have to roll a 10 or lower. Uh, So very small chance of it happening. But when it does, the DM gets to decide what happens. Oh, this happened okay. In uh, mild spoilers for Critical Role Season 1, anyone, they were fighting a white dragon, I believe, and uh, Pike called Channel Divinity, and it succeeded. And I'm pretty sure Matt described it as a hand coming out from the heavens <laughs> and punched the dragon um, and dealed and dealt a lot of damage. Kind of the deus uh, ex machina thing, huh? Oh, yeah. And uh, I won't reveal um, this one, but at the end of Campaign 2, uh, Channel Divinity was incredibly important. Uh, it was clutch that it worked. So it can be game-breaking when it does work. And if it does work, you can't use it again for seven days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> We've convinced but, Doc Robert okay. to try the 15 minute break. So now that's going to, okay, I'll be interested cool. to hear how that goes. <laughs> Very interested. Well, that's really cool, divine intervention. Just, I just like the idea of even having that available at all. And that's at what le- is that? That's player Ten. level 10? That's 10th cleric level. Yep. 10th cleric, cleric, cleric level. level. So, and it's, it's only your cleric level. So if you are multi-classing paladin cleric or something, uh, it and you're level 20 total, it's whatever you are in cleric. So that's what you have to pull. Okay. So I've seen it happen maybe twice. <laughs> but when it does, it's amazing. It's amazing, huh? Yeah. That's interesting. The DM gets to decide, too, how to work it out. I like that. Gives them a chance to, to just be very inventive. And it might not even be a battle. It might be, we need an answer to this riddle. We need to know where the big bad is. We need a a, direction. And that's why they leave it up to the DM because it might be combat worthy. It might be, 
hey, there's a mountain our way. Can it get moved, you know, a few miles that way? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Who knows? It's whatever the DM decides. Well, somebody's made, I guess it's Silver mean, Moon. Yeah, now to get to cleric level 10 and half our games would be a miracle. And Doc Roberts says that they, he's only had uh, that happen once since he started playing D&D, and he plays a lot of D&D. Well, and that's another point. You know what? My brain is like going all over the place is the fact so few of us actually ever get to finish the campaigns that we start. We can finish campaign arcs sometimes. You know, we get through part of the campaign and then it seems like somebody's schedule or something gets in the way and hard to finish a campaign and get to those upper level characters. But it is, but, but sometimes you get to play a one shot where they uh, are graciously let you do like level 15 or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Pixel has done one of those. I think it got streamed, I'm not sure, uh, in our Ages of Ainur community. Let's see. I am now looking at the Tempest domain spells because you can get some other stuff through Cleric, but again, we're already talking level 10 um, because normally there's something that happens at like level 5, and Clerics don't get that, but they do in their domains. So Wrath of the Storm, I brought up uh, and we glanced over it because I made that mistake. That's at level one when you choose this domain. This is a reaction that you get if somebody uh, within five feet of you hits you with an attack. Kind of like Hellish Rebuke for Tieflings. Um, they need to make a dexterity save or they take 2d8 lightning or thunder damage. You get to pick. <laughs> and you get it at level one? Two, level one. two D8s eight. at level one is awesome. That That's a potential for 16 points of damage. Hey, Black Moon, welcome back. And that is, let's see, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. So, and you regain after you finish a long rest. So this is something that you could do three, four, maybe even five times, depending on what you roll or if you use point by. <laughs> Yeah, and how and what your your wisdom modifier is. If you've got a plus three, you get three of them for long rest. That's awesome. And since you're going to pick wisdom as your very best one, you're going to have your best mod number for okay. that. Okay, That's got cool. it. Channel Divinity, we talked about. You get max damage when you're doing uh, lightning or thunder damage, and you can do that once per short rest mm -hmm. uh, at a low level. Then at level six, you get Thunderbolt Strike, which means if you deal lightning damage to a large creature or smaller, you can also push them back 10 feet. Ah, okay. Given certain situations, I could see that being very helpful. I've seen a, a lot of videos of people playing Baldur's Gate 3 and throwing characters off cliffs just to, uh, to get rid of them. So like, I don't yeah, know if I yeah. get more push. <laughs> Let's see. At higher levels, you get to add damage to or add lightning or thunder damage to your weapons. And then let's see. Ooh. At 17th level, you get a flying speed. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, that's it right there. I, I absolutely want to be a Tempest cleric. That's phenomenal. And when you say that you add uh, that other damage to your weapons, then does that make your weapons magic weapons? Uh, I would say it would have to. Let's yeah. see. At eighth level, you gain the ability to infuse your weapon strikes with divine energy. Mm -hmm. Once on each of your turns, oh wow, you can hit a creature with a weapon attack and deal an extra 1d8 thunder damage. When you reach 14th, it's an extra 2d8. Once per turn, you can do an extra 1d8 thunder damage. That's, That's phenomenal. Insane. That's amazing. Yeah, no and, wonder I see so many people doing Tempest Clerics. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, that really just proves your point that you made at the beginning of this about your clerics are not just healers. Your clerics are, are dangerous characters. Absolutely. Now, I did uh, play once a Life Domain Cleric uh, because a lot of their um, domain feats, I guess is the word, uh, was a buff to your healing spell. So that one definitely would be more for a healer. Light domain, the, yet they like the, the fire spells. <laughs> but I think I needed to be a cleric in a campaign where people were constantly getting hurt. So I went with light domain for that. With light, yeah, yeah. 
that I think that your domain is fun too. <laughs> I think as I'm just thinking through this whole thing that the life domain cleric is what uh, my Bunkum Duncan was, and I want to resurrect that character. That's a campaign where my character and another person, their two characters, decided they knew each other. And it, actually, the very first time we got together, the very first episode, we did. And the people, I did not know this person at all. Well, it turned into a fabulous friendship, but it also turned into like a Laurel and Hardy comedy routine all the way through the adventure that was much needed. We were in. Um, Horde of the Dragon Queen, another Wizards of the Coast adventure where you're wandering through a desert for what seems like forever. And Bunkum and Crispy just kept the whole thing moving along because, again, we were we were a comedy team. We were the Smothers Brothers or something like that. <laughs> so I'm just uh, turning to the cleric spell list uh, as Black Moon says, clerics sound interesting. And um, I just remember a couple of things. It's like, yeah. The spells of clerics are very varied. <laughs> Honestly, that's the best word for it. Uh, you could be the, the good healer and the great person who comes up and has calm emotions when somebody's panicking and have all the healing spells and commune with nature, create water, detect evil and all this stuff. Or you could be the opposite and just want to deliver pain. <laughs> uh, instead of taking bless, you could take bane and put that on your enemies, which is if they fail a save, a negative d4 to I think their chat their checks and attacks. Um, you could command people to do things. You uh, have inflict wounds at first level spells. Inflict wounds is the opposite of cure wounds. <laughs> you mm -hmm. just give them the pain. Yeah. My husband uh, likes to go in and say that his character uppercuts his enemies and uh, inflicts wounds as he punches them. <laughs> I just, mm, I think that sounds so destructive. The, the spell that I like the very best that I remember clearly for my cleric, uh, you see, there, it was the one for Granny Patsy because she was a. Dwarf, or the, is it the dwarves that deal with rocks? Okay, she was a she was a rock dwarf, but she wanted to be a cook, and she was a very bad cook. She was so bad that we made her her muffins into a weapon. Like she was yeah. instead of throwing rocks, she was throwing muffins, and they did actual damage. But anyway, it's spiritual weapon, spiritual weapon. I love that because it's it's a bonus action to cast it. And Doc, I did get corrected. You and I had a discussion the other night about whether you that it was a bonus action to cast it, but you automatically got to use it every turn. And I was wrong about that. It is a bonus action to actually use your spiritual weapon. You were 100% correct about that. But um, she made her weapon a frying pan. And so she would be going around hitting the bad guys in the head with a frying pan. And it was so much fun and gives you a little bit of extra damage. As soon as you get second level spells, then you basically get two attacks if you have mm -hmm. spiritual weapon. And there is nothing, in my opinion, any more devastating in, uh, in the whole entire game of Dungeons and Dragons and being in a very bad situation and rolling your one and only attack and it doesn't hit and everybody is depending on you to save the crowd and you roll a seven yeah and the best part about spiritual weapon not just that it's a bonus action but it's not concentration right so one of the best combos is a uh, spiritual weapon which is your bonus action but then uh on the next turn or the turn before spirit guardians mm -hmm. which surround you uh let's see what is it um to do, do a 15 foot radius so 30 feet around you and anyone who is in there or enters into your radius takes damage mm -hmm. so i think they get a save i'm not sure maybe they do yes i'm a save um they can take half damage but they take damage there and then you've got your spiritual weapon balking them on the head for the frying pan but also it's really fun to role play those because you get to pick what the uh, guardians look like or uh, what your spiritual weapon is. Jester, for example, her guardians were flying unicorns and uh, her spiritual weapon was a giant lollipop. Um, with my Granny Patsy cleric, 
we had been in a situation in the, this was a homebrew in a desert community where the whole desert community of wonderful, wonderful bugbears almost got completely wiped out, including the mother of the clan and the whole thing and the big bad evil wanted their oasis, so just slaughtered them. So that was traumatic, and we had funerals. I think people that play D&D somehow love to have emotional funerals. But anyway, the first time I got it and I called on my spiritual weapons, it was that mom and the two or three sons of hers that got killed is who I used as my spirit guardians. And I just brought the whole table to the, oh, and it was, <laughs> it was a wonderful moment in role-playing. And then every time after that that I called up my spiritual guardians they were saying hi mom how are you and the boys doing you know and it was so much fun sorry Aww. had to throw that in there but yes no, fabulous opportunities for role play mm -hmm. yeah i found out the reason they did spirit uh or spiritual weapon as a bonus action was to allow clerics to heal and still have a way to make an attack interesting yeah, and that's a tough decision we get into, don't we, when we're healers? Or it's like, do I oh, yeah. attack or do I save somebody? And it's just really a tough decision. That bad guy could be down to two health points and you want to hit him so bad, but then your friend is on a death save, and what do you do? Exactly. And clerics are one of the few classes that get uh, spare the dying spells, revivify, true resurrection. Uh, not many uh, classes would get those spells, so they are necessary. Oh, yeah. So a cleric is absolutely, if you're like in a Curse of Strahd or whatever, cleric, boy, do you need one for sure. My cleric's SW, oh, spiritual weapon is the Teletubby son. No, and her can... spirit guardians are many <laughs> versions of the dumbass monk who pulled a whatever. Okay, okay. See, you get to personalize them. It's fun. Love oh, the it. deck of many things card. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Don't even talk deck of many things. That's another magic items. We need a, we need a, one of these magic talks about day. my, about, we could do one about the deck of many card things and about magic items. Absolutely. We but are, yeah, I can tell we, we haven't yeah, been. we're a, running out of time. I know we haven't been together for a long time and we want to talk about everything, don't we? <laughs> so let's go ahead and move to. Do we want to do point by today? Uh, Why to not? Yeah, let's do, do that. Yeah. All right. I will find that page. I know it's like in the first three pages or something. But what is it? First 27 time. points you get, Doc? I'm looking. 27 think... points to spend on your ability scores. Let's see. Do, do, do. A score. Okay, so there is a table in the, can, is it going to, show, it's going to blur it. Okay, but there is a, on the other page. There we go, it's on the bottom. And while there you're showing that. the bottom of this page. I'm going to I'm gonna go get one. I'll be right back. I'm going to yeah, go get a player's handbook. You probably handbook. won't need this. Nah, it disappeared again. But there's a table down here that tells you, okay, if you want uh, a 15 to start, which uh, probably will be, you know, very useful to have that in uh, her wisdom. It will cost nine of the 27 points. So when I think of a point system, I think of a video game where, you know, you can like click, I want two extra in decks and then click three extra in constitution. It's not exactly like that. There is a, like a price that you have to figure out and it has to be 27 or lower. I think uh, Nick Reese, she was interested in Tempest, so we're thinking that. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. You're fine. So, yes, uh, we're going 15. Tempest. Okay. So the bottom page 13 of the Player's Handbook basically just says, okay, if you want 12 uh, uh, ability score, then you are spending four of those 27 points to get 12. Okay. So the highest that you can get with this system to start is 15. Do we want to go ahead and knock off 15 for your wisdom? Absolutely. All right. I'm going to I'm going to get a post-it note here so I can keep track of the math. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm thinking from the roles the uh role play point of view and somehow I'm 
whereas the charisma would be important in something somehow i think with tempest cleric that doesn't leave me that doesn't lead me in a charismatic direction that leads me more in uh either strength or constitution and i'm probably uh thinking strength for the second okay. one and you so can't... you've got two ways to approach this. You could start thinking, all right, well, I got to conserve some of these points so I don't have, you know, uh, an eight and everything else. But um, just taking that one fifteen, you're down to eighteen points. So you could either eight uh, an eight modifier, or I'm sorry, an eight uh, ability score is zero points. So you could have fifteen, 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 zero, zero, zero. I mean. 15, 15, 15, 8, 8, 8. Technically. <laughs> gotcha. Um, That's a very good I point. I don't think I've ever done that. I think I've tried to cover everything a little bit. Oh, mm -hmm. race. We have not picked race. And we're going to roll the stats before we do the race. I don't know. I think we're we're already into this. Yeah, let's roll the, the stats. And then if we got to back up, we will. Um, and then the race uh, will help affect some of your stats. So okay. We'll, we can pick up to that accordingly. I don't want to be a total chicken. Oh, I mean, a total like noodle. Okay. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking if I do 14th strength and 12 constitution, what does that leave me? Minus at six. Points, that will 10. leave you with six to use. That will leave so me with six. You've got three spots left. That would be 10 um, if you wanted to put, uh, split it evenly. If you were okay with uh, a 9 or an 8, then uh, we could switch some things around. But 27 is the start. And then we lost 9 points because of the 15. We lost, let's see, 7 wait, of the 14. Wait, wait, and wait, 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 if we start with 8 and we go to 15 wisdom... Isn't that just seven? Oh, I'm, I'm confusing you. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you started with 27 points yeah. um, to purchase from. The 15 yeah. in Wisdom was a minus nine, so that took us to 18. Okay. Then the 14 and the 12 that you wanted uh, leaves you with six points left. Yeah. Okay. I want to add two of them in Dexterity. So I want Dexterity to go to 10. Okay. Dexterity will be 10, leaves you with 4. Okay. So you um, could have 10 and 10, or you could play around with it. I'm going to do 10 in Wisdom and 10 in Intelligence and go 8 with Charisma. I've decided I don't think this Tempest Cleric that messes around with the weather is very charismatic. I just can't see it. Did we do it right, Doc, if we have 15, 14? Two points each to get a 14 or a 15. I don't... I'm looking at the um, sheet, hon. Uh, 15 is 9 points and 14 is 7 points. That's 2 points each to get a 14. I'm confused as to what you're saying there, Doc. Well, I think he says you did it right. His next thing says you did it right. So let's go with what you're doing. Let's keep going. <laughs> I just roll. I hardly ever do these, so this is new for me. Um, would you prefer intelligence and charisma to both be 10, or do you want one to be higher and... You're okay with being uh, maybe a little more gruff and don't care about charisma. <laughs> well, what I had written down was uh, strength 14. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which comes next on the sheet. Is it constitution? Yes. Dex 10. Mm -hmm. Constitution 12. Wisdom. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I think it's wisdom 15 next, it I had somehow written down an X I had seven numbers written down in here oh dear yeah that well I just had more eights an eight in charisma a 10 in intelligence 15 wisdom 10 dexterity 12 constitution 14 strength does that do it did I read it right I'm still confused, Doc Robert, because that's not what's in my player's handbook. Do you so have an updated so version? Because we got 27 points to use, and I'm using the table. So I 
I'm not sure. But uh, bonus mom, if you do that, you still have uh, two extra points because that uh, charisma eight is a zero. So we could say, let's see. Well, then let's up add it. that 12 Look. or we, we can up one of these. Which okay, one dexterity. 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 We could up it all the way to 12. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All right. So I'm going to double check my math here because you start with 27 points. See, this is why we just roll for it because now I'm back in nine. Yeah, so <laughs> we're trying five. something. We're not that. So the assignment to chat <laughs> Is that everyone, you know, investigate by, uh, point by. Minus two, minus nine, zero. Okay. So, 14, 12. <coughs> Uh-oh, my math's off somewhere. Where's my math off? <laughs> <coughs> we'll take it out yeah. of dexterity if we need to reduce something. <laughs> and Doc Roberts says this is why I use D and D Beyond for point by. And McRee says it will be easier on D and D Beyond. Anybody gets the the point of what it is we're trying to do, though. I'll tell you what yeah. we'll do. Let's we'll just go with this for now, and we'll double check before we do our next um, one shot. We will double check with D and D Beyond. You do have one point left, just one point, which could take that intelligence up to a nine, uh, or we could bump dex or charisma, let's see, from a 12 to a 13. Oh, let's just go with the nine for intelligence. And intelligence oh, is... I say nine. I'm sorry. I did a subtraction. Your intelligence will be bumped up to 11 then. Okay. Got it. It is so hard to explain, Doc Robert. Because, again, in my mind, I think video games, all right, you give me 90 points to put in, like, okay, 15 dexterity, 90 minus 15. No, it's not that. We have, like, a price for each of these points. If I want a 15, I have to take 27 minus nine, and then my numbers are getting all jumbled. and. I should give this to my sixth graders as a math practice. <laughs> you should. Yeah, and maybe that'll like <laughs> that'll start an after an after game thing. That's how it works. It just costs double for fourteens or fifteens. Gotcha, Doc Robert. Thank you. That's the proviso. It costs double for fifteens or fifteens or. I think I understand what he's trying to say. I just my. I'm not a math person. My mind isn't wrapping around it. <laughs> so to anyone who's listening, who's going, I have, I'm lost. Uh, so am I. I'm sorry. I tried. <laughs> but we have strength, 14, dex, 12, uh, constitution, 12, intelligence, 11, wisdom, 15, and charisma, 8. Okay. And that's, now, that is livable. And if we didn't get it right on um, a point array, it's very possible we rolled it. So we're okay. And we, we have a temper cleric. Think about uh, your race now. Let's see. I had this thought. Oh, yeah, I did. Because I already knew what I wanted my spirit guardian's weapon to be. Okay. I okay. think, can we go as wild as an Aarakocra? Absolutely. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking um, through the magic of D&D, &D, uh, member of a bird family, but something somewhere in there became an Aarakocra. It's a thunderbird, yeah. And it got caught out in a storm and... Um, left you know and and almost expired but experienced a moment of glory in the storm when they did not expire saw the power of the lightning and and um the power of the lightning and the thunder from kind of an observer point of bird maybe like pushed Aarakocra pushed up against a mountain and held there by the force of the rain or something but could see across a valley this enormous 
this enormous storm, you know, that rushed and went and whatever. You've been thunderstruck. Oh, the, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And Somehow wanted survived. to learn more about the storm and became a cleric because of their love of, of primarily thunder and lightning, but could see what, you know, happened at the oceans, what happens to the tide and just all of that sort of thing. Yeah. So Eric Okra, I'm in love with it. What do you think? Beautiful. I like it. Let's see. And Eric Kroka actually get a plus two to dexterity. Hot and diggity. A plus one to your wisdom. So you brought your wisdom up to 16. So now it's a plus three. You know, when I look at those notes for what I sent you at the Bard, I had some pluses over there. I think I need to send you corrected Bard things, so just ignore what I gave you before stream oh, today. Figure it out. Okay. Just use Basically, we'll just use those notes to recreate her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, wow, I chose great. You can use the origin system with them, too. Okay, well, we're not going anywhere else, okay? <laughs> That's fair. Oh, and, ooh, I did. Ooh, okay. Uh, Eric Crocra have talon attacks, 1d4 slashing, uh, just to strike with their talons. Imagine pairing that with the Tempest domain where you get to add uh, thunder damage to your talons to any strike, so you just slash at somebody and also cause thunder damage. I love that. It could, could be dicey if I'm trying to be... Croca. It could be dicey. I'll have to remember if I'm in like, like we're sneaking up on something and I go to claw it and then I cause thunder to happen. That could bring the whole house <laughs> down on us. Everyone would hear it. So there's a little bit of a liability there. And that's true with spells. Sometimes like thunder rave, thunder shock, those things sound great. And you really want to use them until you realize that you just brought the whole neighborhood to know what you did because they make loud noises. Well, that's interesting because, you know, you get to choose if you want the thunder damage on the talons. But what if your uh, cleric can't control it because of the lightning strike? What if it's partially wild? So every time you want to use a thunder or a lightning um, strike, uh, you have to roll. A you D20 have to roll one. Something happens. Oh, God. I love it. I love it. That's so much fun. So, like, I'm playing a wild magic sorcerer right now, so I'm doing that. And there's a whole table, but leave it up to the DM to be like, okay, you're trying to be quiet, but your magic went wild and you've just casted a thunderclap that could be heard for three miles. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> or something good happens. Like, uh, oh, the next time you use lightning damage, it's max damage without having to use your channel divinity. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Gives you lots of versatility of things you and your DM can come up with. And Doc Robert is telling us that you can use the origin system with some of these other things and actually be able to move your bonuses around. And that could be awesome and fun to use, too. It's such a sandbox, isn't it? Dungeons and Dragons. It truly is. Well, we haven't talked about background or done our random word generator, uh, but we're at 205 and I think I think we've done quite a lot talking about clerics what do you think I think so too I think that it's well worth continuing because so many other subjects have come up you know and this is like we're making this up as we go along uh, and I know that you want to stop and focus on the one shot and so I'm kind of thinking um let's go with the decision here to share that we're going to use the first four classes that we came up with really basically before the end of the year last year and we're going to do this one shot and we need four players and those players can fix can pick between fighter bard rogue or barbarian and they can okay. either use the stats that we have or, or and the names or if they want to create their own thing they can do that too they need to let us know five oh, max mom look you, you've inspired silver moon to uh Make a uh, Tempest Cleric. All <laughs> right. Okay, Silverman, go for it. I'll be dying to know what you're going to pick. Um, and so there's that. And then let's, the next time you and I get together, let's uh, talk a little bit about that, generate some excitement about that. It, it might be possible that we got to redo my um, bars since that's the one episode that we lost. We can continue on the Cleric. 
um, and do the choices that you're talking about. And we'll talk about the one shot and be open for questions. Some of the things we brought up today, people are going to think about it and say, okay, I figured this out or that out, and now I want to say this or that or the other thing. And we will wait to, to for our next character until after we do the um, one shot. How does that sound to you? Okay, sounds fine to me. And the next one on the list alphabetically is Druid, which is my absolute personal favorite. So I cannot wait. And I have played one Druid. I was overwhelmed. And I, it's what I started um, Curse of Strahd with. And I had to ask mm -hmm. to be excused and pick something else. It is a lot. But it, uh, my first character was a Druid <laughs> that I ever played. And that was... <sighs> It was trial by fire, but I learned quickly, and uh, I fell in love with it. It's so versatile. So okay, uh, save that for next time. But yeah, we are doing the one shot October six. I think we pick now. I think that's where and... it's going to be. Let's let's go with that. I honestly, I think that's what Pixel will need to get the overlays done. And my understanding on this, I think, although it can change, is that it will be here on Twitch on Bonus Mom seventy. And hosted by Ages of Ainur so that it goes out. Because, see, Ages of Ainur is really our Dungeons & Dragons channel. But we do this here because it's you and me, and Pixel doesn't have to be here. Okay. So I and think... we do need at least four players. I would maximize it to six. But if anyone okay. messages uh, either Bonus Mom or I and say, I really, really, really want to get in on that, let us know. And if you don't get in on it this time, uh, well, there's going to be another one. But it's going to be Friday night, October 6th. And I already know in chat, some of you have Friday night games. Doc Robert is one of them. Um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping Pixel will play, but I don't know for sure. And thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you for you viewers. My gosh, we have 10 viewers. We got a sub today. That's fabulous. I'm sorry <laughs> about the sounds and things that you that you couldn't do. So... We'll get that fixed for next time. That's something I need Pixel for. Nerdy Teacher, I want to thank you for hanging in there with me and being here through the months of not being here. You still held on to the concept, and you were willing to start again. So thank you so much. Yeah, this is always fun, so I'm glad to be back. Okay, so now there is a Sunday coming up that is the 17th that we could get together because I'm saying, yeah, that's the one let's – Let's, the 17th, let's finish up um, this, get our chat involved in this, talk about the one shot or whatever. So let's do get together September the 17th, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, have a maybe a short, maybe not even an hour long session, but we connect. Is that okay? And then from there we go to the one shot. I'm writing down, we'll finish talking about the cleric and talk about the one shot, which uh, means that chat will be able to help me plan the one shot and how mm. we can torment the players okay <laughs> so let's do it so come tell back in and help me out <laughs> oh yeah let's do it let's that's absolutely awesome you may have a concept then and they can vote in things whatever however you want to handle it let's do it september the 17th sounds fabulous maybe they can help you figure out your spells too what spell list you should take <laughs> yeah yeah let's do it yeah backing up to bark and then if we get to the point where we do four more things and we want to do another one shot we will start with cleric yep okay thank you all so much i'm sorry that my sounds didn't work they will next time thank you for being here and we'll uh we will see you back here i'll see you sooner than that but nerdy teacher and i will see you on the 17th about 1 p.m eastern daylight time to talk about the rest of the cleric a little bit and the one shot Y'all take Thanks care. Thanks for coming, everyone. Bye-bye now.